Marine Technology TV, and we're very pleased to be joined today by Felix Schill, the co-founder and CTO of Hydromia, to discuss the latest technology, technological developments from this innovative Swiss company. Felix, Hydromia is certainly no stranger to the MTR audience, but to start us off, can you give us a by the numbers look at the company today using the metrics of your choice? Yeah, sure. So Hydromia just celebrated its eighth year in business, and we now have a lineup of uh, eight different products in three different product lines. So one is our disk drive thrusters, which are the thinnest uh, rim-driven thrusters in the world, and we have two different models available. We have a line of high-speed optical underwater communication devices called Luma with five different models going from ultra low power to very high bandwidth for live video streaming. And we also now just launched X-Ray, which is a wireless inspection ROV. So this is now a first that you can fly around like a, like a drone without having the cable dragging behind you, which frees up a lot of inspection tasks. Um, so yeah, we've grown quite significantly. We've quadrupled in size over the last four years. And we have now 17 people working here and doing the latest in R&D. So it's very exciting. Uh, so Felix, um, before we dig into some of the most recent technological innovations coming out of Hydromia, why don't you take us on a, a technological journey um, as one of the co-founders? Um, on what technology or premise was the company founded? And what capabilities and technologies have you added? over the years yeah yeah so the history goes back actually almost 20 years now when alexander Barr and myself started off doing research as our phd uh, research on underwater swarm technology and back then we basically looked at what are the key enabling technologies to have underwater swarms and one of them is of course scalable communication between the robots um, because you would like to have 20, 30, 50 of these devices talking to each other. And the other big uh, technology is positioning or localization because they need to know where they are with respect to the others. And so this was essentially both of our PhDs. So I did my PhD in underwater communication for uh, swarms, and then Alex did his PhD on, on distributed localization using acoustics. And then we went off and did other academic projects, and then in a few years later, we met again in Switzerland at the EPFL, one of Europe's top universities, and got together and said, actually, we should get together and apply all of this research that we've done now and uh, make products out of it so that it can actually be used in the real world. And that's how Hydromia got founded. And so initially, we developed Vertex, which was an AUV for environmental monitoring, which initially started off as an academic project within the university. And then we spun that out into the company. But then in the meantime, we also developed the Luma optical modems and the disk drive thrusters, which started off as a component of our AUV. And then people asked us if they could buy this as a product because they, they saw this on trade shows and, and thought it was neat. And then uh, eventually we also pivoted from the AUV to the inspection ROV space with X-Ray, uh, which is a wireless inspection drone, which heavily uses Luma for the wireless video link. So you can actually get HD video in real time wirelessly through the water without needing the tether. And so that's something we just launched and are now pushing forward. You know, um, obviously the, uh, the, the, the roots of the company extend further than its eight years. But when you look at the company that you helped found eight years ago and you look at that same company today, how is it most the same? How is it most different? Well, what's uh, different, I guess, is that in the beginning, it was just uh, the two of us and later the three of us when, when Igor, our current CEO, joined. And uh, we had to do a lot of uh, uh, pretty much everything ourselves from the software, the electronics, building the, the hardware, uh, machining, assembling and so on, and business development and fundraising and so on. So it was a lot on the, on the plate. Um, and I was joking at some point that we had uh, more products than employees at, at some point in time. Um, but that has certainly changed. So now the team has grown and, and, and things are going forward uh, really well. But still the same, I think, is this uh, can-do attitude that we can um, build and develop and prototype everything we do completely in-house. And we're quite proud of that, that we have a well-equipped workshop and the know-how to very quickly go from idea to, to prototype and product uh, because we can uh, machine and 3D print and solder and, and, and make everything in our little workshop. 
and also make the initial quantity for early adopters before we then go and outsource. So, so once we go into production, we of course outsource as much as we can as we scale up, but it's great to have this option that you can try something new. And it also helped us greatly in the pandemic um, when the supply chain was often quite uh, constrained and very challenging so that we could just step in and just do little things ourselves where we didn't have to wait for other people. Uh, Billy, can we talk about some of the latest technology coming out of Hydromia? As I understand, you have an underwater wireless communication systems to help solve some of Subsea's biggest challenges. Can you discuss this technology in detail uh, with insights on where it is or will be deployed? Yeah, of course. So uh, the big challenge underwater is that radio waves don't penetrate through water. So that means there's no GPS, there's no uh, 3G, 4G, uh, no Wi-Fi. And the industry has so far relied on acoustic communication, which uh, works great for, for a lot of applications, but it has a big limitation in terms of bandwidth. So you cannot get an HD video stream through acoustics and also the latency is quite high. So you would not be able to do remote control of a drone uh, efficiently via acoustics. And this is where we developed underwater optical communication, which uses pulses of blue light. Uh, which uh, gives you the high bandwidth and very low latency and in fact does allow you to get a 10 megabit HD video stream in real time at very high quality to the operator and also the control signals from the operator back to the drone with, with millisecond latency so that you don't have that lag while you control it. Um, and a side effect of that high bandwidth is also that it's a lot more power efficient so especially for battery powered devices, you can transmit a thousand times more data with the same energy that you need from the battery, simply because it is so much faster. So that's also a great benefit to uh, equip uh, battery powered sensors or, or other devices with optical uh, modems to allow low, low power data transfer mm -hmm. and get uh, the collected data out to the surface or to an ROV that can go and harvest the, the data. So where we've seen uh, a lot of the deployment for this is now for, for subsea sensors like um, uh, gyro boxes or other devices which have to be monitored in real time during construction uh, offshore. So now they can get real time data feedback very reliably and very quickly. And of course for Luma X, our flagship modem, we now see uh, the effort to put these like access points. You can think of it like Wi-Fi access points for underwater to put these on infrastructure as it is installed so that if an inspection ROV gets close to one of these assets that it's essentially getting high speed data communication um, to get live video and, and live control. Um, just like when you go into a, an airport or a, a cafe and you have Wi-Fi, so in subsea this will be like that, that once you get to an asset that you want to inspect, you already have high speed communication available to you. Um, so, but can you talk during your career, what technology or enabler has helped you or Hydromia uh, to develop solutions that help others uh, work most efficiently and effectively underwater? Yeah, I mean, like with most industries, one big change is, of course, the ever advancing miniaturization and Im immense computing power that you can now have in extremely small and power efficient devices. So now you can have uh, the computing power of a supercomputer in, in a very, very small package only using a few watts. And that has opened up uh, a lot of possibilities that just simply weren't feasible 10 or 20 years ago. And we've seen the same advancement in LED technology in terms of efficiency and speed and also in terms of photonics in general that allows us to make very small optical modems that also would have been much, much bigger in the past. And we've been trying to miniaturize everything because we, we think of being small as a positive thing because it means it's more portable, there's less logistics overhead, everything is much easier to deploy, uh, you don't need big ships or cranes, you can just put the device in a suitcase or a backpack. And uh, we think that will open up a lot of new applications where up to now the cost was prohibitive. But now with um, basically the same capabilities in much smaller packages and at a lower cost, it's suddenly far more interesting. And especially offshore, we now see a lot of infrastructure going in for renewables like offshore wind farms and, and other industries 
uh, which are putting in far more assets than, than the offshore industry has put in over the last decades in a very short amount of time. And all of that has to be maintained and inspected. So we really see uh, the potential for a drone revolution like we've seen with aerial drones happening subsea as well. And that's where we want to be ready when, when that wave comes. Um, you know, Felix, in your job, I'm sure there are many, uh, but what do you see as the biggest challenge to doing your job? Oh, so there's many challenges, of course. Um, one challenge early on was to find uh, funding, of course, like with every startup. And we've seen a reluctance of large companies that need our technology to um, invest in early technology. They all want to come in later when it's established and proven, but someone has to make the first step. So we'd like to maybe see a change in, in large corporates to, to look at the early stage startups because you can kick off a lot of innovation with relatively little money and, and make these changes happen. And then of course, uh, growing a company from three people to 17 people was, was a big challenge as well because you always have to juggle a lot of things and balance um, growing the team versus getting the job done because you already have deadlines and customers and products. So yeah, uh, the first few years are critical, I think, and I'm glad that uh, we had a really good start. Um, you know, I'll assume that R&D at, at Hydromy is dynamic and nonstop. Uh, can you give some uh, insight on your R&D philosophy and budget? And, you know, looking at the next 12 to 24 months, simply put, what's next from Hydromy? Yeah, so I mean, our goal as a company is to turn all of our research ideas into usable products. And our philosophy is to take this step by step and, and de-risk the new technologies as we go. So now we've developed X-Ray as an inspection ROV for confined spaces where we could demonstrate the, the wireless capabilities in a relatively controlled environment like ballast water tanks or freshwater tanks on ships. And so the next step that we're starting now is to take this into the open water domain by, by extending the capabilities of the vehicle into open water navigation and then take the next steps from there into autonomy and uh, essentially uh, eliminating the need for surface vessels and, and pushing the automation forward to make maintenance and inspection an easy task that can be automated. And in the optical communication domain, of course, we're also pushing the boundary constantly going into multi-node networks and uh, and uh, extended capabilities, more speed, more range, of course. So there will be a lot of new products coming out over the next one to two years as well. Okay, well, those are the kind of challenges that keep you going, and those are the kind of challenges that uh, keep us going as well. So, Felix, it's been a true pleasure to talk to you, and I truly look forward to following up with your, you and your team in the future. Yeah, thanks very much.